It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube Scout Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I'm finally here making another video. And like I said, it's a raw one, so there will be no edits. Anyway, if you already know, I'm doing my 32. You know what? Bump that intro. If you've seen any of my past videos, then you already know what this is. It's a draft breakdown. Read the title. Yeah, duh. Anyway, um, I've already done the AFC and the NFC North. I've already done the AFC and the NFC West. And I have done the AFC East. So now I'm on the NFC East. And if you're seeing this video, I've already done the New York Giants. So now I'm going to the next team, and that is the Washington Redskins. Obviously, you tell by the title. So anyway, you know what? Instead of wasting your time with all this and the intro, let's just get into it. With the first pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select the Ron Payne Alabama defensive tackle. Deron Payne may literally be the sleeper first round pick. And the reason why I say that is because now, now, in a recent video, I actually did say that Minka Fitzpatrick is probably it. But when you're thinking about, you know, he was picked a little bit low, lower. Deron Payne, this dude, I just saw so much energy from him and effort that it's one of those things where it's just like, I don't even, like, this dude, this guy has that kind of it factor that you're looking for in a defensive lineman. And he may very well become the best defensive lineman, defensive tackle in this draft. I mean, I, it, it's sometimes I get, I get stuck on what I want to say about a player because either that player is really, really bad, which actually I probably just say, oh, bump that dude. Like, I don't want to talk about him. Or they're so good that... It's kind of hard to go into because it's something where if you're a Washington Redskins fan, you already heard this stuff. So why am I? Why do I need to tell you? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, honestly, the dude, I'm going to just say this. If you haven't heard about him or whatever, I'm not going to go into too much details. This dude is a beast. Just simple as that. And with Jonathan Allen on one side and you have him on the other side, you got something, Washington Redskins. Seriously, you got something. And I believe they do play a 3-4, so yeah, you definitely got something. So anyway, with their second pick, they chose probably one of the best running backs in this draft. Um, I don't like doing rankings, but I did kind of rank my running backs a little bit. With, to me, Nick Chubb was number one, right? Not Saquon Barkley, yes, Nick Chubb. Number two was still not Saquon Barkley. It was Darius Geis. Darius Geis was my second best running back that I saw. Everything that I saw with Nick Chubb, I felt the same way about Darius Geis. Um, the only thing that Darius Geis may have an advantage over him is catching the football. But off the field stuff, and that shouldn't be part of you know just the football aspect of a player, but that definitely lowered him in this draft, and the reason why the Redskins got to choose him in the second round. You got to steal when it came to him. He's a guy that always falls forward when he gets tackled. He's a guy that fights for the extra yards, which I don't see from the other aforementioned running back. And, and I'm not talking about Nick Chubb. And he is a guy that continuously always shows effort as a runner. And that may fall into the whole, you know, lowering his shoulder and fight for extra yardage. But it's a whole combination of what this guy gives you and what I've seen on tape when it comes to guys. Um, <clears throat> you literally, I think, it's almost like last year with Dalvin Cook. And I think that that's what the Redskins are going to be getting when they come to Darius. Guys, you're getting that Dalvin Cook type running back where he's going to give you everything that you want. And you got him. And I guess you could say a cheap price. So this is a good thing. The only thing that's the only thing that's wrong with the situation is that he doesn't have a fifth year option, obviously. But when it comes down to it, he's the type of guy with most running backs, they play if they if you're good, you get about six good seasons and then you're usually done after that. Six or seven good seasons. So, I mean honestly, by his last by his last contract, he's gonna start declining anyway. So 
and I'm and I'm not saying it's just going to be him, but that's most running backs anyway. But for what y'all got right now, that if y'all want to try to win the Super Bowl, he is going to be a huge key piece to it. So make sure that y'all treat him right, and hopefully the guy stays healthy, so y'all can finally get back to where y'all want to go. Anyway, in the third round, they chose Garyon Christian. Now, I'm not the hugest fan of Gary on Christian. It was kind of, I was watching tape of him, and <clears throat> there was plays where he played left tackle, and then there was other plays where he played right tackle. It was hard to get a good opinion on him, so I can't really give much when I when it comes to him. Like, I, it's hard to, to really give him anything, but I can say that, you know, from what I've read about him before I watched him, he is an athletic type of dude with all of the, uh, not to say ability, but all the measurables to being a uh, good offensive lineman. Um, I'm not sure where they're going to play him exactly. Um, if they're thinking about letting Trent Williams go at one point, then maybe he's a guy that they're going to try to push at left tackle. Or in right tackle, they have Morgan Moses, but I think he's gotten hurt quite a bit sometimes. You got Brandon Sheriff. I guess left guard could be a situation. I don't, a sheriff or right guard? Well, anyway, who with the other guard position that Sheriff doesn't play, maybe that's where uh, Christian Christian goes. But we'll see. We we will see. But uh, it, it's hard to get an opinion on him because he was just he, he switched a lot. So anyway, in the fourth round, their next pick was Troy Apke from Penn State. Not a good pick. I do not like this pick at all. Um. I, I don't think he brings you anything, um, maybe just special teams value, but as a as a pure safety, as a safety in general, I think that he's an average type of safety. I think that, you know, he's just one of those guys that's just out there. Um, he's not going to he's not going to be a total bum, but I don't think he's going to be a guy that can change your defense into taking it from where maybe at to at a higher level. He's just a piece on the chessboard that you have that you could probably do things with, but there's not much that he's going to give you as a total package of a playmaker. So that's what I think about him. Who knows? But it is what it is. The next pick was Tim Settle, uh, Virginia Tech defensive tackle. Um, this is another situation where um, they playing in a 3-4. I don't know their offensive, their defensive line like that. So, um, I know you already got Jonathan Allen and you got Deron Payne. Tim Settle, I don't know if that is a nose tackle situation. Um, I don't know if that is just a backup situation. Obviously, a fifth-round pick. You're not expecting the guy to be a starter, but I guess it's just a backup help. Just in case if Jonathan Allen is not ready. He had some shoulder issues coming out of college, so maybe it's a situation where, hey, if we get another guy, and Jonathan Allen ends up being a bum, be a bum because of injuries, not a bum because of player, but because of injuries. Then Tim Settle can be a guy that we can say, hey, you know, he's had he has ability, and we can plug him in. And we already got a Deron Payne, so it just helps him out even more. With their next pick, you got um, and and Tim Settle. Just going back to it, he's a solid guy. He's not like one of those really really great defensive tackles or underrated defensive tackles that I think is going to be really, really great. But it's going to be pretty solid for your team. He's just going to really play a part, like a Troy Apke. Um, I think he may be a better playmaker than Troy Apke, but he's going to give you something. It may not be the greatest, but he's going to give you something. With that next pick, they chose Sean Dion Hamilton, Alabama linebacker. 3-4 inside linebacker. We all know that the Redskins play a 3-4. Let me just say this. He may be the most underrated defensive tackle in this draft besides Jermaine Carter that got picked by the Panthers in the fifth round from Maryland. Um, and the reason why he's so underrated is because of the injury that happened. This guy actually was considered the better linebacker between him and Rashad Evans. So it's kind of, you know, you got to look at that. Like, Rashad Evans is a first-round pick, and he's actually pretty darn good. He's actually... Honestly, he could, out of the first-round picks, he could turn out to be the best one, the best defense tackle. But if Sean Deion Hamilton healthy is actually better than him, then the risk is may have actually got a steal when it comes to him. And honestly, he's not the only steal that they have in this draft. When Because Sean Deion Hamilton can do everything. But there was another steal that, that the Redskins had in this draft, and that is the next pick, Greg Stroman, cornerback for Virginia Tech. Let me just say this. Strowman is 
he is way better than what he's given credit for. He is a what I call a do your job corner. Um, and what I mean is is that he was never like great at everything, but he was never bad at anything. He re it's kind of like Nick Nelson from Wisconsin, and the injury really pushed him down. But with both of these players, they are do your job corner. They are guys that you can say, okay, I need you to play press man. I need you to play off zone. I need you to play off man. I need you to play press zone. I need you to like. Those guys can do it. They have, to me, intellect and the feet, and they may not be the fastest, but they got they got still got good hips to be able to do the stuff that you're looking for and the instincts to give you to give you everything that you want from a cornerback. And he's not going to be just a press man or off zone. The guy is going to be able to give you different things and set receivers up in different ways to disguise how he's going to cover. And that's what you're going to get from him is he's a do-your-job type of dude. He's going to get in that playbook, and I'm not going to say he's going to know the playbook right away, but when he gets that playbook down, watch out. This dude is going to be a beast for the Washington Redskins. So anyway, with the last pick, I believe this was uh, Mr. Irrelevant. The Washington Redskins chose Trey Quinn from uh, SMU. Um, I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, I'll come back. But if I'm not, then don't worry about it. Uh, but Trey Quinn is a, a solid receiver. He is a uh, kind of a slot guy to me. I never thought of him as an outside guy. But... I do know him because of Cortland Sutton from SMU. Um, Trey Quinn got a, a, a lot of advantages, though, of Cortland Sutton being the number one receiver. So Trey Quinn got a chance to always kind of be one-on-one -on -one with a corner and never a situation where he was ever really double-teamed. So we will see what happens with him, and that's probably the biggest reason why he went later in the draft. But that's him playing on the outside. I think his best bet is an inside uh, receiver. Even though that's Jameis and Crowder's spot, if Crowder was to get hurt, then you have someone that you can you can put out there. Or if Crowder was, let's say, tired, there's someone that you could put out there that can give you some ability. Four receiver sets, and you got someone that he's going to be solid. You put him at a, a trips bunch, and that's another thing that you can get him to be open up in space and to be the playmaker that he could be. So anyway, um, when it comes down to an overall, I think that, Within the first two, the first two picks, I really, really like about the Redskins. Um, the next three picks, I wasn't the biggest fans of, but I wasn't like, eh. I, it was just kind of like, you know, they're solid guys. But then with the next three picks after that, these were some really good underrated picks that I think that the Redskins really can build their team upon. So overall, you know, out of their eight picks that they had, I think five of them can give you uh, can give you some stuff in the NFL, can give the Redskins the chance to be able to improve and become a team that could potentially be a perennial playoff team. They do play in a tough division, but it gives them a chance to really build. So anyway, um, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more draft breakdowns from me, please subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like what I had to say about a certain Redskins player or the draft pick, please comment so we can debate. Share this video so other people can comment and we can all debate and we can build this big draft community. Once again, this is Draft Raw Authentic. I thank you for watching. Goodbye.